places in the world so good evening and good morning to those who are in the same country yes and welcome Thank you for you know, having me I'm glad to have you you know I've known you for quite a few years now it is it is uh, I haven't actually looked how many years now I think we go <laughs> back to about 2013 something like that um I believe that's about right yeah yes yes <laughs> you know so tell us a little um, bit about yourself um, well, I'm a tea leaf reader in Melbourne, Australia. Um, I read from traditional tea cups as well as tea leaf reading cards and tea leaf reading charms. Um, I started with traditional cups, so uh, where one drinks a cup of tea, and it doesn't matter what type of tea, you can drink any type of tea, and you leave a few spoons of water in the bottom and the client or the sitter as we call them uh, spins the cup and all the leaves stick up around the sides of the cup and we read the leaves and it's um, what we call symbolic or emblematic divination and it's all the symbols that tell me about the future. Um, a cup generally holds 12 months in time 
uh, we do look at cups um, a bit like looking at a clock with like a proper analog clock and we divide it up into sections so you can look at it as 12 months, uh, 3 months, 6 months, 12 days if you wanted to. Um, when I was growing up as a, a younger child, I remember uh, my mother and we used to call them aunties, but it was actually <laughs> my mum's friend. But when I was a child, my mother's friends, everyone called them aunties, like it was Auntie Joan or Auntie Shirley and so on. And um, you would often look at a breakfast cup of the day and uh, there was always some laughs and giggles and usually about someone's love life or some hot wild affair I think that they were dreaming they would have. <laughs> um, so it was a kind of fun thing to grow up with. But um, tea leaf reading itself actually goes right back to late 15th, early 16th century in China. And uh, many people seem to think tea reading is very British, but it actually began in China and uh, was a very sacred ceremony, often only performed by the monks in the temples. So many people would flock to a temple at 4 a.m. in the morning to find out what a daily forecast was going to be. And if the monk predicted a really bad day for business or trade, um, people would actually only do the necessaries and literally go back home, um, <laughs> extremely superstitious. And that's what the um, basis was, was tea leaf reading. And it became more popular in the 17th century uh, throughout Europe um, or the British Isles, Scotland, England, Ireland, so forth, because of the shipping merchants that actually shipped tea across the shores. Um, lots of people will hear and know of coffee reading um, and again tea leaf reading, coffee reading are both the same, it's called tassiography or tassiomancy and it means by reading symbols in a cup um, from the dregs of a drink. Um, back then you would see it right, go right back to Egyptians with hieroglyphics or anything to do with symbolic reading. So some people it's a bit of a fun if you have a few red wines and you've got some grit in the bottle of a, a wine glass, um, you can still read uh, wine glasses. So it's a bit like that where you can read anything. It's like even a bowl of mac and ro macaroni and cheese. <laughs> 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 it's all it's all the uh, energy transfer and um, symbolic divination. So, it, and it is, um, you know, it's all the different symbols do have yes. a way to awaken your intuition. Your intuition, sorry, yes. <laughs> you know. Yes. And I, I did just uh, Saturday when I had my student over. Um, mm -hmm. I picked up a tiger shell, uh, cowrie shell, and. Yep. I was actually looking at the images that were appearing on the patterns, reading yes. him also from just the shell. And uh, he, he looks at me, and he's just like, it's all intuition. It's all, yeah. you know, a tool, yeah. you know. Yes, exactly. And, and that can be any tools. And, um, you know, my my poison is my choice um, is <laughs> tea cups and again tea cards and charms but it's just like sometimes when you're a child I remember as a child and you'd be sitting in a bathroom how ridiculous this and you'd be looking at the old lino on the floor linoleum some people know it as or violet <laughs> and you would see all the patterns in the floor because back then I was a child in the 60s and 70s and you have crazy crazy patterns on your floor all tiles Remind me to send you a picture later. Yeah. Oh, you have a crazy line, I <laughs> Yeah, but you still see it sometimes if you go in a and and it's just I think if you are a person that looks for symbols, and it doesn't matter what it is. Like my two room, I look out to um, there's acreage over the back of us, and there's massive pine trees, and just different days you can look out there and you can see different things in the pine trees. So, yeah, it's. Um, just looking at symbols and, oh, and I've noticed over the times when I've uh, helped people learn or more about tea and you know so I've got a Facebook tea group um, you know it's amazing the things people start seeing once they realize you look at symbols mm. so um, and it's quite good to see but uh, it's just yeah it's all around us so does it make a difference what type of tea you use to get the best reading? 
Um, I tend to read, when I have um, my clients here, I let them choose of three different teas. Um, and it's mainly because of taste and you have to allow something with caffeine-free and so forth. But it really doesn't matter what type of tea. The best ones, though, are sort of a, a mid-range size leaf. Long leaf teas, like particularly green teas, have massive leaves. They are very, very difficult to read in a cup. So if I was uh, wanting to read a green tea, quite often I'd use the spoon and actually smash some of the dry leaves down to smaller because if you just drink uh, and read a green tea, all you're going to see is boats and canoes because <laughs> of the leaf shape. Mm. So um, I use uh, my favourite go-to tea for myself and same when I do expos is actually a black Indian tea called Assam. Um, it's my own daily drinker, but it has the most beautiful leaf. A lot of um, people love Earl Grey or even just an old English breakfast. But even if you don't have loose leaf tea, um, anyone can just break open the tea bag, you know, you get in a normal grocery store. Um, you don't tip the whole bag in. That's the problem many people make. You only need uh, probably about a quarter of a teaspoon of tea leaves. And particularly tea bags, they're very fine and it's often like the dust. Yep. Um, so they go really muddy. So, you know, if uh, anyone's having a go at it there and you're using the tea bag, only use about a quarter of a teaspoon, if that. So it was too much mud. Um, when right. reading leaves in a cup, we actually don't read every single dot. You only go to all the majors. And um, the reason being, you'd be there eight, nine hours if you read every dot in a cup. Uh, the leaves you're also looking at, because we're always looking... Uh, the dark parts, like the blobs of tea in a cup. and um, But quite often you'll see in those white spaces more information as well. Um, and there's no difference. Some people look at it as negatives and positives, but it actually makes no difference. It's just really what the symbols are. It's a bit like the old mess of um, everybody thinks tea leaves, symbols in the bottom of the cup are all doom and gloom and mayhem. Um, they've watched too much Harry Potter. And um, <laughs> it is, really. And it's um, not. It just means the distant future when it's in the bottom of the cup. Right, so, and it gets closer uh, as it gets to the top of the cup. Areas. You know, the when you're looking at your cup, you know, the yeah. the bottom you say is the the distant future, and as you get closer to the rim, it brings things more into the right. present. Earlier in the months, yes, because you'd look at it like a clock. So imagine you've got. Um, uh, a text a line or a, a, I use knit and needles for my pointers but um, you know that you drew all the lines and segments of a clock in a cup your handle always means you where you stand today um, traditional if I was reading a cup for myself the handle points towards you which is your starting point and the handle means what's closest to your heart and it means you Things on the opposite side of the cup tend to be more uh, material, business, uh, outside influence.